Hey guys, in this video I'd like to show you how to take your bridge data and turn it into a nice Excel graph with a line of best fit. Here I've got my data table, and in this column I've got the different lengths of bridges that I tested, and the three trials right here, the numbers indicating how many pennies each bridge held before it broke. Before we make a graph, we want to calculate averages. To do that, click in this cell right below the word average, and we want to type equal sign the word average parentheses highlight the three numbers that you want to take the average of, close the parentheses, and hit enter. Cool calculated the average. Even better, we can click on that box, move our cursor down to the bottom right until it turns into a black cross there, and we can click and drag and have it calculate all the averages. That was pretty fast. With these averages still selected, Let's make a graph. Click on Insert over where it says Charts. Click on Insert Scatter XY and pick the first option. Now we've got a graph, but it doesn't look great. First, we need some axis titles. Click on the graph. Click on the plus sign to the right. And then here's an option for axis titles. Go ahead and check that checkbox. Now we've got two text boxes where we can name our axes. Let's start with the x axis. This is the length in centimeters of our plank bridge. For our y-axis, it's number of pennies held, but it's also the average. So let's say average number of pennies held. We also need a chart title. A good title could be the question that we're trying to answer in the lab. I copied the question from our OneNote. How does the length of a bridge affect the amount of weight it can support? Next, there's something weird going on with these x-axis numbers. They aren't what we want them to be. We want them to be our lengths in centimeters over here, but Excel automatically numbers them just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's fix that. We right click on our graph, go to Select Data, and you'll see Series 1 right here. This is the data that's being graphed, and we need to edit that. So we're going to click the Edit button right here. You'll see that it's got some numbers here. This is basically code for where it's getting the y values from, which are averages. But it doesn't know where to get the x values from. And so we are going to click on this button to select a range. Then we're going to highlight the bridge lengths. And then we're going to click on this button right here to bring those numbers back in. Let's press OK. And OK again. 
and now our x-axis looks better. Our shortest bridge was 7 centimeters, and that's where our first data point is. Okay, uh, let's finish this graph up by making a trend line for our data. This can also be called a line of best fit. Let's click on the graph, click on the plus sign, click on trend line, and you'll see a line appear that fits your data. Let's click on the little arrow next to trend line, and let's go to more options. Over here you can change the shape of the trend line. At this point we're going to keep it a linear line. Scroll down on the options here, and if you aren't seeing these options, you can switch between these until you get to the one with three bars. Down here at the bottom, there's a checkbox that says display equation on chart. Let's do that. Now it shows the equation of this line on the graph. Some of you might be familiar with these equations for lines. This negative 11.733 here is the slope of the line. And this plus 182.8 is where the y-intercept will be. And I'm going to click on the trend line again. And I'm also going to check display r-squared value on the chart. It put it right here under our equation, and this r-squared value can be anywhere from 0 to 1. The closer it is to 1 means the better the data fits the line. And so that would mean it would be a good line to make predictions from. Let's say that we wanted to know how many pennies an 11 centimeter bridge could hold. Or, excuse me, actually a 12 centimeter bridge. That's one that I didn't test in this example. So there's no data point there, but we could use our line and estimate how many pennies it would hold. Since our r squared value is pretty close to one, our line is a pretty good way to estimate that value. If the r squared value was closer to zero, our line wouldn't be a great way to estimate points. Thanks for watching.